Hi everyone, thank you for tuning into my talk. My name is Wei Tang. This is a joint work between Princeton and Oregon National Lab, also supported by the NSF Expedition EPIC project. This work is about combining classical and quantum computation to run large quantum circuits on small quantum computers. Quantum computing has emerged as a promising computational approach with the potential to benefit many scientific fields. Each additional qubit doubles the size of the computational state space available to a QC algorithm. Perhaps the most famous example is the Schwarz integer factorization algorithm, which promises an exponential speedup over its classical counterparts. However, we're currently in the noisy intermediate scale quantum era, or NISC, which are noisy and small. The figure here shows running the Bernstein Vazirani or BV algorithm on IBM quantum devices at half capacity. For example, we're running 26 qubits on their largest 53 qubit Rochester device with 8,000 shots. The probability of getting the correct result, which is called a fidelity, decreases to below 1% even on the 20 qubit Johannesburg device. The fidelity is effectively zero on the larger ones. Furthermore, the 53 qubit device is hard limited to run circuits smaller than 53 qubits. Even just one more qubit is currently impossible. The short story is, we want larger devices, but they're also much noisier. This shows that there's a huge gap between the quality and size of the quantum devices we have nowadays and the requirements of many proposed use cases for QC. The question is, how do we evaluate larger quantum circuits with better fidelity despite these challenges? Our approach, called CAQC, cuts a quantum circuit, then combines quantum processing and classical processing to run QC algorithms at a larger scale. Essentially, we first cut large quantum circuits into smaller sub-circuits that fit on small quantum computers. Use the quantum computers to evaluate the small sub-circuits. We eventually sort together the results using classical computing. The figure here shows an example of making one cut to split a 5-qubit circuit into two 3-qubit sub-circuits. Instead of requiring a 5-qubit QC, we now only need a 3-qubit QC. The classical reconstruction steps are in a few slides. The challenge here is that classical reconstruction is time and resource intensive. The theory of cutting a quantum circuit comes from decomposing an identity channel. Every cut incurs four upstream subcircuits, each measured in a different basis, and six downstream subcircuits, each initialized in a different state. The classical reconstruction involves performing eight pairs of Kronecker products between the different subcircuit outputs and compute the sum of the pairs. Altogether, there are eight to the k summation terms for k cuts. The important question is how to make circuit cutting practical and scalable. On this note, CUTQC is a fully automatic end to end tool chain that first selects efficient cut points given any input quantum circuit. Mixed Integer Programming, or MIP, automatically locates the optimal solutions. Small NIST platforms subsequently evaluate the sub-circuits. Eventually, classical reconstruction techniques sew the sub-circuits back together, produce the uncut probability output either in full definition or dynamically adjusted definition. CACQC beats classical simulation in runtime and NISC in fidelity and circuit sizes. Now, let's see an example of CalQC. We first improved the reconstruction recipe and made it exponentially faster than the prior theoretical work. Using our recipe, every cut incurs three upstream sub-circuits and four downstream sub-circuits. Instead of eight to the k summation terms, only four to the k is now required. Specifically, with each cut to a quantum edge, we measure or initialize different sub-circuits. Four pairs of Kronecker products are computed and added to produce the uncut output. Back to the same example circuit, assume for now we manually choose one cut as indicated by the red cross. What is the probability of the state, say, 01010? After running the small sub-circuits on a 3-qubit QC, the relevant state of sub-circuit 1 is 01 and sub-circuit 2 is 010. Note that measuring I and Z bases correspond to the same logical circuit, and hence only three upstream subcircuits are actually executed. The collection of these subcircuit probabilities is part of the quantum device runtime, 
which is negligible compared to the entire end-to-end -end runtime. With these sub-circuit probabilities, the uncut probability for the state can be classically computed. Other quantum states are computed similarly, just with their corresponding sub-circuit states. Just now we were assuming a manual selection of cut points. General quantum circuits are impossible to eyeball the efficient cuts. MIP solvers allow us to design complicated optimization objective functions and is able to decide whether the cut points found are indeed optimal. The inputs to the MIP solver include a circuit, the size of the quantum computer available, max number of cuts, which is set to 10 in this work, and the maximum number of sub-circuits, which is set to 5 in this work. The output is the optimal set of cut points satisfying the input constraints. The MIP solver first strips all single qubit gates, since they do not affect the circuit connectivity. These are added back when running the sub-circuits. Next, we encode the gates as vertices and qubit lines as edges in a graph. We use YVC to indicate if a vertex V is in sub-circuit C, and XEC to indicate if an edge E is cut in sub-circuit C. Couple natural constraints are um, every vertex must belong to one and only one subcircuit. Every subcircuit must fit on the user-defined QC size, and some other constraints to help constrain the x and y variables and define where the cut points are. We use Groovy, a commercial MIP solver, to minimize the classical cost while satisfying the constraints. We choose to use the total number of floating-point operations in the classical reconstruction as the objective. MIP is able to find optimal solutions usually within seconds for the smaller benchmarks and within minutes for the largest ones we studied in the paper. After locating the cut points, we can compute the entire full state on cut output in full definition. To make the runtime faster, CutQC employs several post-processing techniques. On the algorithm side, the order of sub-circuits appearing in the computation does not affect the result but greatly affects the amount of computation. We put smaller sub-circuits at the front to minimize the vector size carryover. Second, we terminate computation early if any of the sub-circuit results are all zeros. This may seem simplistic, but offers significant speed-up for several benchmarks. On the programming side, we implemented our backend in C and uses basic linear algebra subprograms or BLAS, and Intel compilers to optimize the performance on Intel CPUs. We also developed a two-level parallel processing framework. We first distribute the computation onto multiple compute nodes and use multi-thread processing within each node. This allows us to port our toolchain to HPC clusters for fast processing. In the future, GPUs may also help significantly. Before scaling CACUC even further, let's first take a step back and think about what large quantum circuits are trying to achieve. Quantum circuits can be loosely categorized into two groups. The first group produces sparse output probabilities, where just a few solution states have high probabilities, and the rest of the non-solution states have zero or negligible probabilities. The goal is to locate the solution states. The second group produces dense output probabilities, where the majority of the states have non-zero output. It is impossible to accurately reconstruct the output for this group even with a large and reliable quantum computer. Because one, the amount of space required to even just store the probabilities is exponential. And two, the number of shots required to get a converged probability distribution is also exponential. DD algorithm merges certain states into one being and maintains the sum of probabilities for the states merged, instead of the individual ones within. In each recursion, DD runs the sub-circuits, merges the sub-circuit states, and zooms in on the more prominent beams with higher probability. For sparse output, DD translates to a DFS-like search and recursively locates the solution states. For dense output, DD translates to a BFS-like search and builds a blurred landscape of the dense output, with the ability to arbitrarily zoom in. This is equivalent to efficient sampling of very large quantum circuits on small quantum computers. This is the complete DD algorithm. During the first DD recursion, users can decide an initial division of bins. The max number of bins is determined by the system memory available. 
During the subsequent DD recursions, the algorithm automatically zooms in on the most prominent beams while holding the other qubit states constant. Users can also arbitrarily choose which beam to zoom in if, for some reason, the most prominent beams are not of interest. Let's see an example of using DD to locate solution states. The figure shows executing a 4-qubit BV circuit on 3-qubit quantum computers. BV has exactly one solution. The figure plots the individual states as the mean of the sum of the beam they are in. The first recursion concludes that all states starting with 0 have a combined probability of 0, and all states starting with 1 have a combined probability of 1. The solution state is located after four recursions. Each recursion stores and computes probability vectors of length 2 to the 1 instead of 2 to the 4. This figure shows using DD to get a blurred output for a dense circuit. We are executing a 2x2 supremacy circuit on 3 qubit quantum computers. Supremacy circuits produce the Porter Thomas distribution. Each DD recursion zooms in on a beam of states with the highest probability, improving its definition. More recursions allow a closer reconstruction of the ground truth probability landscape. We use up to 16 Intel compute nodes as the classical computing backend. For benchmark circuits under 35 qubits, we use state vector simulators as the QC backend to demonstrate CalQC runtime and fidelity. For benchmark circuits up to 100 qubits, there are currently no viable ways to study their fidelity, since classical simulations are intractable and NISC devices are still too noisy. Instead, we use uniform distributions as a pseudo-QC backend to mainly study the CalQC runtime. The classical post-processing runtime is independent of what QC backends we are using to execute the sub-circuits. Finally, we use real IBM quantum devices of various sizes for the fidelity experiments. In this work, CalQC is limited to 10 cuts and 5 sub-circuits. We will show that this limitation allows us to cut quantum circuits of interesting scales. For the rest of the work, we will use QC evaluation to refer to running the circuits without cutting, and CalQC evaluation to refer to running the circuits without tool chain. Here is a list of benchmark circuits used. They represent a general set of circuits for gate-based QC platforms and promising near-term applications. To evaluate the CalQC performance, we are interested in its runtime and fidelity. To benchmark the runtime, we let the classical post-processing run at least 10 minutes before scaling up based on the total number of Crown Decker terms. We just report the end-to-end -end war time if the processing took less than 10 minutes. This is accurate because each Crown Decker term involves exactly the same amount of classical compute, and there are no data dependencies among them. To quantify the fidelity on real quantum computers, we use chi-square to measure the distance between output and ground truth obtained via classical simulation. The smaller is better. Our first set of results run larger quantum circuits on 10, 15, 20, and 25 qubit devices. On average, CalQC achieves 60x to 8600x speedup over the classical simulation baseline. All of our circuits are larger than our quantum device backends, which means the small NISC platforms could not have run these circuits at all. Our experiments show that densely connected circuits are harder to cut, larger quantum circuits generally require more classical post-processing, and having larger quantum computers generally improves the runtime, but has a diminishing return. For example, the 5x7 supremacy circuit admits the same optimal cuts on either a 20 or a 25 qubit device. Our second set of results compares circuits run directly on a 20 qubit Johannesburg device without cutting and run in a CalQC mode on a 5 qubit Bogota device. We calculate the percentage of chi square reduction, which measures how much noise CalQC reduces. Larger reduction is better. CalQC on average reduces 21% to 47% of the noise. Among the benchmarks, only approximate QFT circuits have negative reductions. This is because the compiled AQFT circuits are much deeper than the other benchmarks. Both CalQC and the regular QC modes have accuracies too low for any meaningful comparisons. 
we expect QC to outperform QC as next devices become better. As a result, small and reliable QC combined with QC is better than large but unreliable QC. Next, we demonstrate how the DD algorithm increases the fidelity of the reconstructed output as it runs more recursions. We use QC to execute 16 to 24 qubit benchmark circuits on 15 qubit quantum computers. The x-axis shows the recursion depth. The left y-axis shows the chi-square distance to the ground truth, indicated by the solid lines. The right y-axis shows the cumulative runtime of all the recursions, indicated by the dashed lines. The verification is limited to a maximum of 10 recursions, or until chi-square becomes zero. We assume that the maximum classical system memory available is 10 qubits, which limits how many bins we can reconstruct for each DD recursion. Chi-square monotonically decreases as more recursions run for all benchmarks. Experiments are limited to 10 recursions because classically verified the reconstructed output is slow. It is important to note that the runtime of CACQC itself is very fast. In fact, for the 24 qubit benchmark studied here, the cumulative runtime of 10 recursions is only a fraction of a second. In contrast, Qiskit takes about 130 seconds to simulate a 24 qubit circuit. We did not verify the DD performance for larger circuits because classically simulated their ground truth becomes very slow. NISC devices will gradually improve in fidelity and sizes to allow evaluating sub-circuits beyond the classical simulation limit. For example, even the sub-circuits can become 50 or 60 qubits. The figure here shows running circuits of up to 100 qubits on 30, 40, 50, and 60 qubit quantum computers. There is no classical simulation baseline to compare against, since they are no longer tractable for circuits of this size. DD algorithms obtains their blurred probability landscape with a definition of 2 to the 35 merged bins. You might have seen partial state simulation in some of the classical simulation works of quantum circuits where they compute an arbitrary subset of the quantum states. CACQC can be easily adapted to compute 2 to the 35 arbitrary states instead of the merged bins, and the runtime will be exactly the same. The difference is that CACQC is efficiently querying the entire probability landscape of very large circuits with high fidelity, and the results here only use the 16 CPU nodes and do not require thousands of HPC compute nodes or millions of hours. In conclusion, CUTQC leverages both quantum and classical computing platforms to execute quantum circuits of up to 100 qubits while simultaneously improving the fidelity of the output. The experimental results are significantly beyond the current reach of classical or quantum methods alone. This work offers a practical strategy for a hybrid quantum classical advantage in QC applications. The artifacts for our work have been successfully evaluated and its results reproduced. Please refer to the paper appendix for details on how to access the codes. Our full paper is also available on archive. Looking forward to seeing you at the live Q&A session at S+. If you have further questions, please feel free to reach me via email. Thank you.